We're on the wait, that horrible grind of impatience between getting a chapter, reading it, and then waiting for another chapter. But in the meantime, we can in fact do a prediction view. So, as of the most recent chapter, we have Wendy revealing a new, I want to say, you know, in quotations form, because there's, there's possibilities with it that can really kind of count as a form, and others that say, could be more towards it just being uh, like a, I don't want to even call it like a power-up state. I'm going to try and do a, a video more on the full description of, of what that's going to be. Um, and I'm just kind of like the adept of, of what I would believe is the form like going to entail to. But for now, let's just kind of go over some, just my estimations and my guesses of where this next chapter is going to go. So we got the showing of fifth generation Dragon Force. We don't have a whole lot of information on what makes it different. It just seems kind of monstrous, uh, a little bit uh, spooky and creepy looking, which is actually really what I wanted for fifth generation Dragon Force. I, I wanted it to um, be more of that, again, monstrous tone because we know the Dragon Eaters are different. We don't know entirely the full differences in what makes fifth generation cut away as much with everything else. But we do know, obviously, that their Dragon Force is forbidden to them. You know, it seems to be very dangerous. I'm guessing that it slowly kind of makes them lose control. Like, it just becomes them... Makes them become like a... Uh, just like a mindless monster. It seemed kind of that way from the way Skolion was describing uh, some aspects. But as of right now, I think we're going to get more of an explanation next chapter. Not only on... Fifth generation Dragon Force, but also on Wendy's new current state because I think a lot of people are jumping the gun um, on like trying to trying to get all rustled by this because I, I know, we already had some parts earlier in and just a hundred years quest you can't even just pull up you know uh, another series or even Yuri Mishima's uh, works in general like remember back when we first saw it, uh, Igneous Hand people were freaking out thinking it was a deal and oh he's bringing them back. Oh no, the next chapter we got revealed it was Ignea and you know, he's not, he, he is in fact Fire Dragon, but he's Igneal's son. And then people freaking out, oh, it doesn't make sense if it's Igneal's son, why did he ever mention him? And then the following chapter we got a very logical explanation of, of why that is. We will need to wait at least until we get an explanation before, you know, flipping out. I, I think that there's a couple possibilities of Wendy's, um, you know, Irene's state, but I, obviously, I think we're going to get more of an explanation in the next chapter because, you know, they, the Hiroshima likes to leave things on cliffhangers and make you wonder, like, man, I can't, I, I really want to figure out what this next thing is. You know, what what exactly is the explanation behind how she can do this? Or, you know, a lot of other things. Again, like both Igneous hand, who is he, and then how exactly he's Igneous son. You know, we got to wait. Uh, patience, listen, I'm a very impatient guy, so me telling you, everybody really, to be patient is is enough of a stretch on my part. But anyway, the fight, I really want to see more of Wendy's versatility and not just, you know, uh, you know, dragon slaying magic because one thing about her, she she has a very high level of, uh, of support. She's, you know, she's able to do buffs. She's able to cure status effects. Um, she's, you know, a leveling enchantress, but she hasn't reached up to like what we've seen levels that Irene was capable of. When I, you know, Irene was... You know, a high enchantress just in her weakened human form, and then in dragon form, she becomes a master enchantress. So, something like that coming up for Wendy is going to be really cool. Outside of that, one thing that really confused me is, like, everybody's really dropping their new stuff. Like, hey, this is what I've been training for, like, for the last year. You know, or, you, know you got, like, Lucy with their star dress mix. You know, everyone's dropping. You really think that Wendy's not going to have something? And it's... I'll do a video, like kind of giving my estimation on this whole, you know, Irene state and and what I think it will mean for her and kind of just going over what I would consider three possibilities. But a larger scale battle um, for Wendy, because one of the things that I think is uh, actually really consistent about Wendy's character is fights that she's in are generally really good. You know, you got like the fight against Faust, that was really good. I, you know, they won through uh, teamwork, the way that they, you know, the gotcha all held him down. Um, you know, and Wendy ended up using her roar to buff Nazis attack. You know, they had the uh, the fight with the Hades, which was great. I mean, if you count Azuma, then I, I guess like that's a fight that she's had that wasn't really good. 
Um, her fight with Sherry was really good. Uh, her fight with Easel. Her fight with Damari was uh, very... It was a very emotional one, especially, you know, the fight with Irene. Wendy has a really good track record for having some of the best... Like, being involved in some of the best fights in the series. Not obviously, you know... that. I think her fight with Easel was is definitely um, up there in some of the more entertaining ones because you know that's the one that I think really shocked everyone in Arcade Dragon Force and you know getting to see this little girl dominate this multiple hundred year old sword demon. But it's what I, why I'm looking forward to in the next chapter because Wendy's greatest asset, though she is a dragon slayer, is her abilities as an enchantress. And where you see, like, other characters, like Urza is mixing up her swords in various new ways. Gray seems to be really advancing his, um, his demon slang abilities in general. Like, we, we're still kind of, like... What's interesting also is that, you know, out of them advancing, Natsu is seemingly a little bit worried about his strength, which is a really nice twist on uh, on him, because, you know, you'd think that when it comes to powering up and fighting, he'd be the one to, you know, be in the head of the group of that. And uh, with all of them, like, Wendy going more towards her enchanting side also leaves a lot up for you know more dragon stuff in the future instead of just her getting you know a, oh you know a bu more buff version of dragon force to, to fight Neba, which would be cool but I, I i think personally character wise this is better plus i mean i, I mean plus for real like that everything like the whole part where wendy was talking about uh you know uh, her being ashamed that she overestimated herself and you know she was really like upset more that you know she did wasn't as that she was not as powerful as she thought she was you saw that weakness but at the same time her her starting to kind of really really think i you know it's not the time for that right now i need to stay strong and then get back on her feet and really push forward so i'm looking forward to the next chapter i really want to see again the, the explanations more on both forms well wendy's i would call again quotation marks form but just a much more kind of like with Wendy, it can be easily described. It could be very quickly described like that. Um, Nibbles, I think, needs more explanation because there has to be something about fifth generation Dragon Force that, that makes it dangerous. Because obviously, if it's forbidden, it has to be detrimental to them. And um, Dragon Force is, I mean, really, other than like draining your magic, it's not like it, uh, you know, is going to, oh, it depletes your lifespan or something. But until then, Comment below. Tell me what your thoughts and predictions are about this next chapter. Uh, I really want to see Wendy just be a beast, like in like back in the Easel fight. You know, something like this, where she just you just see on one of uh, one of Alderaan's hands just this massive tornado. Imagine if she uses one of, like her sky drill and that like big wind like covers that entire city. Something's just as, like holy crap! Like this is a big part for Wendy. Wendy's time to shine because when it comes to a lot of the other characters, like. With Grey, you know, advancing, uh, you know, so he could be confident enough to protect Juvia. Natsu being worried about his own strength. Urza having more of, like, a... More of a appreciation for others being stronger than her, like, with Laxis. And, you know, hopefully more uh, soon with, once they fix Jalal, you know, advancing those two. Because Wendy's the only one that doesn't have a... Uh, Wendy's the only one that doesn't have, like, a romantic thing for her. You know, she's a lot... She's too young. She hasn't got a ship yet. But the whole fact of her having this uh, this kind of like self-crushing realization, you know, of her self-overestimation is really interesting. And I, I really like that, uh, that absolute like self-awareness, but that same time of that self-awareness kind of really hurting her, the, it really kind of like helped her get herself back up and keep going. But anyway... Yeah, thumbs up to the video. I'd really appreciate it. Find the like button and the subscribe button. And check out my other videos. And I appreciate it when you already subscribed. I thank you all for listening. Bye.